I have some hot news to warm you on a wintry day. For the first time in history, a controlled fusion reaction has produced more energy than went into making it. Let's talk about that today. I'm Luke and this is Polymathy. This happened for the first time just last week at the National Ignition Laboratory in California. And it was announced today by the Department of Energy that yes, this has actually happened for the first time. To say this is a breakthrough is an understatement. In the forest, I actually was talking to you about fusion just a few months ago because I am so enthusiastic about science in general, but especially about this topic because we have so many ways that we can get energy. You can burn wood, coal, oil, gas. You can use water power, geothermal, wind, solar and nuclear fission, those nuclear power plants that we know about. But doing nuclear fusion, that's the holy grail because in theory, from water and from other sources that there are different kinds of hydrogen, we can get the kinds of isotopes we need from not just Earth, but all over the solar system to power human civilization for the foreseeable millennia. It is an amazing and important thing for us to figure out because if we don't want to use fossil fuels anymore, well, we need to have a stable base load source of electricity. And the way to do that, the way that we are just about to do, which is so amazing, is to actually produce power from fusion. So this is a big deal, not because we haven't done fusion before. Shortly after we figured out how to do fission, I'm talking about the human race, we were able to do fusion, but you know, just like a fission in a big dangerous bomb, fusion came first in a big dangerous bomb. The thermonuclear weapons that we've heard about are H-bombs. Those are basically just fission bombs that cause the fusion reaction and a way, way more powerful explosion even than the nuclear fission reaction. So doing controlled fusion, we've been doing that in the laboratory since the mid 20th century. And we were just kind of expecting, we're, you know, looking at, uh, at science and all these things that it was going to happen in, you know, a few decades. It's always, you know, it's fusion's 30 years away and always will be. The problem is that if you want to put, well, any reaction, whether it's a chemical reaction or you got a fusion reaction, a fission reaction, you have to do something to start it, right? And that often takes energy. And there are fusion reactions like the sun, which has abandoned me in this cold, cold landscape. The sun produces more energy than it needs to actually start it because of its gravitational confinement and all that. And that's how it gives us the light that we enjoy. And of course, the aforementioned H-bombs produce more energy than you have to put into it to get them started. But when it comes to doing a controlled fusion reaction, hot enough that you can, you know, get some kind of use out of it, but not so dangerous and explosive that you, you know, can't do anything with it, putting in less energy and getting more out of it, that's been so difficult. So a lot of the experimental fusion reactors, well, what are they trying to do? They're trying to do fusion and understand more about the physics of that, but they're also, when it comes to energy, trying to get more energy out than they're putting in for the hope that one day we'd, able, we'd be able to turn that into some kind of a power plant machine to produce our electricity. Different types of controlled fusion in laboratories include magnetic confinement, using magnetic fields to constrict the plasma until it creates a fusion reaction. And those create fusion, it's just you need to use more energy than you get out of it. And the same has also been true up to this point of that which worked recently at the Lawrence Livermore facility where they used inertial confinement, where you have some deuterium and tritium mixed together in a capsule and then shot with 192 lasers or up to that amount in order to create a super hot and condensed plasma that is able to fuse. And that is the amazing thing that they did. So here's the crazy thing. These are the numbers. They put 2.05 megajoules of energy into it and they got out 3.15 more than 150%. So not only did it meet break even for the first time confirmed, but went beyond that by an additional 50%. And it's possible that something between 30 and 100% is possible with a system like this. Now, this does not mean that we're going to be able to have fusion power immediately and, you know, the next few months or something, because this is just an experimental reactor to prove the concept. What's that concept? 
that we can actually, with human technology, create a controlled fusion reaction that creates more energy. But it's not something that's designed by power plant engineers in order to generate electricity. But think of this. This is how significant that this is. This is like Prometheus showing humans, hey, you can make fire. Now, humans at some point had been walking around just horribly frigid cold landscapes like this, and they were cold and they huddled together and they did not know how to make fire. They'd seen it before, probably, once in a while when lightning strikes. So imagine, you know, so here's wood. The principle is that I can get more energy out of this wood than I put into it, but I have to light it. Now, even though I know how to do this, I wouldn't want to because <laughs> it's super inconvenient. It's, it's difficult. And none of us today have ever seen fusion power. Imagine human beings who had never seen food cooked before and couldn't understand the benefits nutritionally to doing that. They would just have to eat everything raw. And so their food choices were limited and a number of other things, heat and so forth. They knew that, oh, they knew fire was possible, but being able to actually make it happen and get more energy out of it, well, that for the first time has occurred. So imagine the primitive humans not knowing how to make fire with just sticks, and finally they're able to do it for the first time and then hopefully repeat it. So the next thing is going to be to see this experiment repeated uh, definitively several times and then to see if that is actually a viable way to generate electricity because those are different you know being able to produce a controlled reaction outstanding can you get electricity from that we'll see uh in fact really recently a bunch of uh youtubers have been talking a lot about fusion i don't know if they knew about the national ignition facility and what was going on there um, but there are a lot of things happening around the world at the national level, the international level. I talked about ITER the last time I did a video on this subject. And also, probably most fascinatingly, something like the private uh, rocket industry that's been going on, bringing commercial space flight uh, into reality, is that there are now commercial fusion companies that are trying to be the first ones to produce electricity, produce a power plant that you could actually sell and produce electricity for people, replacing our baseload electricity, which in most places is powered by things like natural gas or coal, if not nuclear fission, and being able instead to power our whole civilization with a source of energy that is much cleaner, if not completely clean, that is virtually unlimited, that is on demand, and will be that thing which brings human civilization to a completely new new level because just yeah, it just wasn't possible in the way that is imagined in science fiction without this step that finally has happened so i couldn't be more excited are you excited um would you like to know more about fusion would you like to hear about helion this super cool uh company all these different companies again uh, and facilities at the national and private level, international, all of them are fascinating. Um, Helion's doing some really interesting stuff. That we'd like to hear about that. I would like to talk about it. So let me know in the comments. Thanks so much. Wadete. I have some hot news 